to see mm -hmm. Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared, and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're going to have, what? I can't, I can't say it good. Mary, you're going to have a baby. I, you're going to have a baby, and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not going to have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms, literally no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem and that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way and they followed. When the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, and then they saw angels. The angel said, a new baby is get, getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel was singing. Glorious. And then the shepherd said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out at night. And then the wise man heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers, and some wipes, and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold ring and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room was very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby i ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world. Oh, that's great. Let's sing together. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Oh, come let us adore Him. Christ the Lord will praise His name forever. We'll praise His name forever. We'll praise His name forever. Christ the Lord. We'll give Him all the glory. We'll give Him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory, Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy.
or not, maybe Stephen should turn me on. <laughs> well, good morning and Merry Christmas Eve gift to all of you. That's what my family does is we Christmas Eve gift each other. So now all of you owe me something before you leave here today because I got gotcha. you. If you are visiting with us this morning, thank you so much. It is a beautiful morning. It's raining on Christmas Eve, and it's a great day. If you will go ahead and if you would fill out the little form, and you know I struggle with this on a weekly basis on what to call that, so we're just going to call it the sheet today. So if you will fill out the sheet and just kind of tear that off and leave it in your seat, we will pick it up sometime. Also, if you're with us for the first time, if you will go ahead and prepare for our communion. Your communion is in the seat in front of you, down on the tray. If you'll go ahead and get that, it will be ready when the time comes. We want to congratulate Bill and Isabel Hun, who will be celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary this week. You are invited to come and celebrate with them this Saturday, December 30th, from 2 to 5 p.m. in the parlor, and please, no gifts. Isabel said that. Bill did not. <laughs> Our holiday schedule. Uh, this morning, we're here at 1015. If you're not here, you're late. Um, we are having this service only this morning, then this evening. Make sure that you plan to come back at 5 p.m. for our Christmas candlelight service. Uh, this is a great time that we've all learned to make a, a true family event, traditional Christmas candlelight service. It's an awesome time. I promise it's one of the highlights of the year. Then all this week, Wednesday, all of our activities are canceled. Our Sunday, next Sunday, December 31st, we will back to regular schedule with classes and regular worship time. And then Wednesday, January 3rd, this is a new one we're throwing on you. January 3rd, we will have a New Year prayer service. It'll be right in here. There'll be no diner, but we will have a prayer time for the upcoming 2024 on Wednesday, January 23rd. Also, just a reminder... Our offices are technically closed until January 2nd, so it's through January 1st. This morning, the world notices Jesus. The world takes a moment, and even if they are complete unbelievers, they are calling this Christmas day. We should rejoice in the fact the world, wherever they are, takes a moment to say Jesus is Lord. Amen? Luke chapter 1, 46 through 55. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he took notice of this lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and the haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel 
and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Father, we, may we recognize daily the life of Jesus on earth. And may we strive to follow his words. And Father, we pray that all the world will too rejoice in him this day. Father, be with us throughout this week. Be with us throughout this time of our family coming together and enjoying each other's company while praising your name. Father, bless this time together. In your son's holy name, amen. Let's all stand and let's sing together. Hosanna, you my king. I worship and I sing. I lift your holy name upon high. I worship and adore. Sing praise forevermore. Sing it again. Hosanna, you're my king. I worship and I sing. I lift your holy name up on high. I worship and Choirs of angels sing in exultation. Oh, sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us Jesus, to Thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Him, Christ the Lord. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or Your infinite wisdom, who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above. Sing it.
sing it, church. And I stand, I stand in of you. I stand, I stand in of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. Sing it again with me. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand. my light, my string, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm, what heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Amen. Be seated, please. We're going to sing one more song as we enter into our time of communion. Then Gary Moody's going to come. And lead us around the bread and around the cup. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is Redeemer, living word, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living morning church family and Merry Christmas I'm glad you brought the rain with you this morning a blessing from God our scripture before the bread this morning is first John chapter 4 verse 10 this is love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for each of us we are so blessed to have a Heavenly Father that loved us so much that he was willing to send his one and only son to be our savior. And without him, our life would be very, very difficult. I don't know how people who don't know Jesus cope in this world in which we live in. You know, he, uh, his plan was perfect. He had Jesus experience birth and childhood and siblings. He experienced everything that you and I experience. He was even tempted by Satan himself, but didn't give in. He knows exactly what we go through each and every day of our lives. And he knew that he was going to save each of us, and he did just that on the cross. He sacrificed himself. His teachings still apply to us today. The parables he used, the miracles he performed, they all strengthen our faith and help us live our lives and the, the mercy and the grace that he showed those, even the ones that supposedly knew him and turned his back on him, even the ones that crucified him and killed him, he prayed to his father right before his death to forgive them 
for they didn't know what they were doing. That's our loving Savior. That is our Lord of Lords, our King of Kings, our Prince of Peace, our wonderful Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your love, your grace, and your mercy that you show us each and every day. And we thank you for the gift of Jesus that you sent to save not just us, Father, but for all mankind. You don't care what our background is, where we come from, or what we're dealing with today. You know exactly where we are, and you accept us for who we are. And as we break this bread this morning, Father, we do so in remembrance of that sacrifice made for us. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble call? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved me so. to take the cup in 1 John chapter 4 verse 14 and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world the power of Jesus sacrifice on the cross demonstrates a death of God's love for humanity and it provides that pathway of eternal life for each of us you know he told us the only way through heaven is through him and he also promised us that he's gone to prepare a place in his father's house and that he wouldn't tell us that if it wasn't true. And we know he shed his blood for our sins, and we are so thankful. And we also need to remember that after that third day, he conquered that grave. Our Savior was victorious, and we too celebrate in that victory of knowing that we'll be with him one day eternally. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank you for Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the blood that he shed on our behalf. Father, your plan was perfect. Your son was perfect. He experienced everything we did except sin, Father. We thank you for everything that he provides us and how he walks this day, every day with us. Father, we just pray that you will forgive us as we do feel daily and we know. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise and then to glory go.
This concludes the Lord's Supper. Now we have the opportunity to give back some of what we've been blessed with. John chapter 20, verse 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. We have an opportunity now to give back. And this family here that meets in Granbury, uh, thank you for your generosity. But certainly that victory we share in Christ, we want to have others share with us. We want our family members to go immediate and our friends, and the only way we can do that is continuing to serve him each and every day. So as we give this morning, let's pray that that is put to good work so that we can spread the good news to all those who need to hear the word of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the many blessings in which you give us. And we thank you, Father, for the many opportunities you give us, not only here locally, but abroad. And we pray that, Father, that we will use these special gifts and talents in our finances, Father, that you have blessed us with. May we never forget how fortunate we are compared to other parts of the world. What a blessing we have knowing that you take care of us and then may we be willing to serve all people of all places. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I'm sure over the next few weeks, I'm going to sing some songs you don't know. Somebody's going to poke somebody and say, I don't know that song. I'm not singing it. <laughs> Happens all the time. You know, I'm just going to remind you that It Is Well With My Soul was a new song, too, at some point. So, uh, y'all, uh, I would appreciate any grace you can give me. I'm going, to, I'm going to probably learn some new songs because you know some songs I don't know. But uh, the good thing is we're all here together. We don't, we don't all agree, but we're all here together and we all love the Lord. Let's stand and let's sing. The first Noel, the angel did sing, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields. Hey! 
seated, please. So there's no doubt in the next few weeks, John Scott's going to lead a song that I don't know. And I'm going to turn around to whoever's sitting next to me and say, I don't know that song and I'm not singing it. <laughs> and that person is going to say to me, thank you. So <laughs> I'm wondering this morning, what's on your mind? As you came in here and you got here about 10, 15 this morning, what's on your mind? Probably a lot of things on your mind. Wouldn't it be nice if we could come to those double glass doors and those doors would somehow have a, a cleansing effect on our minds and on our hearts and everything that we're feeling anxious about, everything that we are concerned and worried about, all those things that are going through our mind. Wouldn't it be nice if at about 10, 15 on Sunday morning you could come to those doors and everything was just cleansed and you could focus exclusively on worship? I was driving in this morning, and per usual, my mind was bouncing here, there, and everywhere. And I just paused for a moment. I thought, this is a day, not only this morning, but this afternoon at 5 o'clock as well, that we can focus exclusively on the miracle revealed in Scripture that set in motion God's plan to rescue us from the dominion of darkness. God's plan to send the Savior, it is a phenomenal miracle. And what a privilege and blessing it is to spend our entire day focusing on this significant miracle in Scripture. My goal this morning is to do a good job leading in to your experience at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Luke chapter 2, verse 26. I want to encourage you just to pause and listen Whatever's on your mind to cast it aside just for a few moments and focus and focus exclusively on the miracle. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have, been, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. And isn't that the truth? Nothing is impossible with God. And so out of the blue, Mary receives this rather unsettling yet amazing news from an angel communicating to her that she was going to be with a child in the most miraculous way possible. And her response, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. That's her response. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. I'm just curious this morning. As we think about this very young woman, this very young woman who eagerly embraces God's divine will and 
receives this news again, seemingly out of the blue, and I'm, I'm curious, are you ready to say that? Are you ready to say, I am a servant of the Lord? Are you ready to embrace his will? Are you ready to embrace everything God has in mind for you? Because what it really means is, translated what it means is you're saying, Lord, take control. Whatever you say, I am fine. I am very willing to embrace whatever you convey to me. Lord, it's not me that's in control. Lord, take control. Last, if you happen to be here last Sunday, and I realize a number of you were not here with us last Sunday, I'm actually preaching through the Gospel of Luke. And the passage that we looked at last week had what I refer to as kingdom language. And see, oh, the idea of God reigning in our hearts, that's kingdom language. So in essence, what Mary is saying is, I'm eager for you to reign in my heart, to reign in my life. That is kingdom language. And yet, we quickly acknowledge in Mary's case and in her experience in her young life, there will be consequences. For her to embrace God's divine will, there's most definitely going to be consequences. In Mary's case, the consequences of being pregnant outside of marriage could be very, very severe. I want to share just a brief article with you that at least gives us some inkling of what she was experiencing at that time. The writer says, by choosing to submit to the call of God, Mary would jeopardize her future marriage, her family's favor, her reputation in the community, and her very life. Go back and read the Old Testament. And who would believe her story? A message from God delivered by an angel, the overshadowing of power from the Holy Spirit upon her. All seen as a wild tale, a preposterous attempt to explain away her condition. And then he goes on and makes this application for us today. There will also be consequences to obeying the call of God. We risk giving up our previous lifestyles, our attitude, relationships, and we may suffer ridicule and persecution by a world way too smart to need such a crutch. So therefore, if we choose to let the Lord take control of our lives, there will be consequences for us as well. You may be familiar with the song, Lord, Take Control. And I just have just a little section of the lyrics here. In the lyrics, the songwriter says, my heart my mind, my body, my soul, I give to you, take control. I give my body a living sacrifice. Lord, take control. Take control. I love that song. I think it is, as far as the songs we've seen, it's one of my all-time favorites. And I really embrace the whole idea of God being in control, and yet I think I'm like all of us. We want God to take full control of our lives, and yet we also like the idea of everything going our way at the same time as well. And I think we're quick to acknowledge it doesn't work like that, because what that means is we really remain in control, and we like the idea of everything going our way. We want it both ways. And yet that doesn't mean, that means that really ultimately we remain in control. So if we choose to let the Lord take control, there will be consequences. Let's think about those consequences this morning. So do you want to be like Mary? Do you want to have a, a similar response when you are fully aware of what God's divine will is for your life? Do you want to be like Mary and be as eager as her? I want to think back. I'm going to repeat this passage several times. Is our mentality very similar to hers where I simply say, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. My guess is, as the new year, new year begins, we're, we're going to commit Think, you know, I want to read the scripture more. Maybe you want to read the, the entire Bible during the course of a year. Maybe you have some other plan or some other objective during the course of 2024. But as you read Scripture, as you reflect on what the Scripture is saying to your life, is that your mentality? Every passage you read, everything that you embrace, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. 
I believe the truth is, and I use the term we very purposely this morning, we, all of us, we have some growing to do, do we not? We have by no means arrived because we prefer to make our own plans and manipulate circumstances to our own liking. I don't know about you, I got some growing to do in that area because I really like the idea of sort of making my own plans and being on my timetable and manipulating circumstances to my own liking. And yet responding to the call of God often means giving up something or maybe responding to the call of God means giving up someone. What is God calling you to today? Doing what God expects could cause you to be the laughing stock of the group. I feel quite certain that Mary was ridiculed. May not have been in the sense of being the laughing stock. I think she was ridiculed in the sense that they didn't believe what she had to say in her circumstances. So responding to God means assuming his timetable and not ours. I don't know about you, but my timetable goes much faster than God's often does. My timetable is, uh, let's go on and see if we can't get that done today. And if we can't get that accomplished today, let's get it done in the next 48 hours. And yet as we embrace God controlling our lives, we are assuming his timetable and not ours. Submitting to God also means giving up what feels secure. So what really feels secure to you this morning? Are you willing to submit to God in such a way that you're eager to give up what feels secure in your life? Listening to and obeying the call of God means life most likely is never going to be the same. It won't be status quo. It won't be the experience that you've always had. And if you're really eager to make meaningful changes in your life during the course of the new year is not going to look the same as life did in 2023. So may we be like Mary. Trust God enough to answer, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And who knows? What indescribable, life-changing events may result from such a faith? I've always noted that when we choose to commit our lives to God's will, life suddenly becomes very, very unpredictable. And for some of us, that's really exciting. For some, thinking, I I do not like the unpredictable factor at all in my life. But who knows what life-changing events can occur from such faith? A prayerful response to Luke chapter 1, verse 38 that we've read repeatedly. I think the prayerful response is exactly what is conveyed in the lyrics of the song. My heart, my mind, my body, my soul, I give to you, take control. I give my body a living sacrifice. Lord, take control. Take control. To express that very prayer that's in the form of the lyrics of that song. I'm going to offer an invitation this morning, and it's going to be an invitation that has several different components to it this morning. First of all, an invitation I think is appropriate as we think about the story of Mary, an invitation to relinquish control. As you came in those doors this morning, so many things going through your mind, so many things you're concerned about, even things that you're feeling especially anxious or concerned about. How can you relinquish control even of those matters in your life? in such a way that God reigns. An invitation to respond to the very call of God. So as you reflect on Scripture and 
furthermore, reflect on the very opportunities that God is presenting to you at this moment. Are you embracing his invitation to respond to him and to respond to him fully? But it's also an invitation for you to receive support and prayer. So one of the things we do, and I realize we have a lot of guests here this morning, and I want to echo what Mark has already said. We're so glad that you're a part of our time together. One of the things we do back here in this corner room at the very back to my right, we have a couple of our shepherds and their wives generally join them that they're just there to pray with you. They're there to listen. They're there to be an, an encourager. And whether you've been here since uh, the Apostle Paul, as far as your time at the Granbury Church of Christ, or this is your first Sunday, we want to welcome you. We want to pray for you. We want to be great listeners. And most important, we want to be encouraging. And then the last thing I want to mention is it's an invitation to bring a friend this evening. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Tonight, we want to invite you back to our candlelight service at 5 o'clock. And again, my intent has been, I hope that what I have done is just laid a foundation, just really considered this miracle sufficiently for you to have an especially meaningful experience tonight at 5 o'clock. John Scott's going to lead us on an invitation song if you'd like to stand this morning. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive our King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature see. And heaven and nature see. And heaven and heaven and nature see. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let endless songs employ. Wild fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. We're going to finish that song, the last uh, couple of verses, but I just want to encourage you to take the joy of Jesus with you today, and may that just overflow in your life. Let's sing. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make His blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. Is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of, and his, wonders love. of his love. be seated for just a moment. I have two prayer requests I'd like to share with you, uh, with the family. Um, most, a lot of you know Charles and Belle Porter. They're members of the Victory class. Uh, Charles was taken to the ER at Harris Hospital downtown yesterday, I believe. He's going to have surgery today, a procedure uh, to unblock uh, blockage in his carotid artery. Uh, so they have asked for our prayers uh, and so we certainly want to honor that request. Also, a uh, sister is with us, Ann Jay, is with us today. She's seated right here in the middle with John Webb. Uh, Ann and their family have had an ongoing uh, round of, of medical issues with their son, Keith, as many of you have known. She just wanted to let you know how much 
She loves us as a church, and she is so thankful for the love that we have shown her uh, in uh, sending, sending men to come and work with the health care providers and help with uh, Keith in their home uh, on the needs that he has. Uh, for those of you that have been sharing meals and taking meals over to them, many cards and letters of encouragement, uh, it means a lot to the Jay family. So for Ann and, and, her sister, and her daughter, Jana, and their son, Keith, they would like to say a great big thank you and let, let you know how much they love you. So let's honor both uh, Charles' request, Anne's, and also we will have our benediction prayer. Let's pray. Oh, God, you are a loving God. We just thank you so much for today, for the season that we come together, that the whole world stops and at least just pauses to acknowledge uh, the birth of your son. Uh, at this time, we would ask that you would be with the Porter family and Charles's procedure. We pray for a successful procedure and a complete recovery. Um, and we also ask that you be with Ann Jay and her family uh, today and, and moving forward. Uh, you know the needs there, Lord. We pray that uh, we know that you will meet them in accordance with your will. We ask for strength, healing, and comfort. We ask that we as a church will be able to wrap our arms around these two families moving forward into the new year. Uh, be with us in all that we do. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this time of year. We thank you for your love and for your mercy. Uh, be with us as we go forward from this place uh, in this new year. We pray that everything we do will be to glorify you. Uh, give us strength in all that we do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas.